There you go. You got it. Okay. I don't know what happened, but now this is real distracting to me right here, okay? So I'm going to need some folks to relocate right in here, okay? Kind of like a little bomb went off and everybody just scattered. So thank y'all so much for being with us this morning. Hope you guys have had a great week. Oh, uh, okay, I've lost the preacher. He'll be back in a minute, I guess. All right, we're going to open with a word of prayer. Brother Lloyd. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. Thank you for the blessings that you've given us, for the beautiful weather we've had. Lord, thank you for the the service we had here yesterday in the with the deacons, Lord. It was a great blessing. I learned a lot from it, Lord, and I want you to help each one that was here, Lord, how we should apply it to our life and to our service to you. Lord, I ask that you go through this service with us this morning. Open each heart for the message that you've given Brother Mark for us, Lord, and that we would apply it to our lives and our lives to your service. All things we ask in your Lord, wonderful and holy name. Amen. Amen.
Well, good morning, Central Hatchet. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. I tell you, it's good to be in the Lord's house. Amen? Amen. Amen. I tell you, I hope you've had a good week. It's been a wonderful week. Uh, I tell you, God is just blessed in a mighty way, in a lot of ways. Uh, yesterday, we had deacon training here for all of our association, and the, uh, uh, we had about 60-something show up, and I am just thankful, God, for uh, uh, the men and women that was here that worked to help uh, us put that on yesterday. It was great training. Uh, I, I, was, I was thankful for our church yesterday. Amen? And... Uh, we uh, we just had a good time. Hey, I wanted to uh, again uh, remind you we got our trip for the ark coming up. Uh, it's going to be on uh, November the fifth, right after church. We're going to be leaving, going to up to the ark. Uh, we'll travel to uh, about Knoxville that afternoon, spend the night, and uh, then we'll get up the next morning, going up to uh, Florence, Kentucky where we're going to be staying uh, for a couple of days. We'll go to the Creation Museum, and then we'll come back and we'll go to the Ark, uh, and then we'll come back to Sevierville down. Uh, uh, everybody knows where Sevierville is next to uh, Pigeon Forge, and we're going to stay there for a couple of days, and then we'll come home. The cost of that trip is $425 per person. That includes your motel room and your tickets getting in. I need to know how many rooms to block off. So if you can let me know that you want to go on that trip, I need to get those rooms blocked off for us while I can get them at that price. So with that being said, uh, uh, I hope you'll uh, remember to do that. Um, we uh, got next Sunday night is going to be our annual meeting with the association. Remember the backpacks. Uh, I know we're going to keep our backpacks here and carry them up as we go the first weekend in December, but we still need those backpacks in here where we'll know how many that we have uh, gotten. Uh, also, go to thinking about and planning, if you'd like to go with us the first weekend in December as we'll be uh, holding a Christmas party uh, for the kids there in Rogersville, Tennessee, we'd love to have you go uh, uh, and be part of that. Uh, you need to let myself or Miss Connie one know that you're going on that trip uh, where we can make uh, arrangements for that. It'll be a great time of uh, ministry as we fulfill the Acts 1-8 uh, challenge to the church. So without further ado, it's good to see you again. I love you. And uh, all my little friends, if you'll come forward, we'll have our children's sermon at this time. All my little friends, come forward. Amen. 
Hey, we all supposed to have the love of Jesus in our heart, are we not? That's right. Huh? We are. We are. But you know what? Sometimes I have a problem with having the love of Jesus in my heart. You know why? Sometimes I get mad. Do any of y'all ever get mad? Huh? You do? Well, what happens to you when you get mad? <laughs> How about somebody else? Somebody else? Tell me something. What does something happen? What do you? What happens to you? When you yeah, come on. Come up here where I can see you, man. Come on. Tell me what happens to you when you get mad. You get frustrated. Then what do you do? You ever stomp your foot when you get mad? You ever grit your teeth when you get mad? Mm. Huh? What do you think about when you're mad? A lot of stuff. <laughs> mean stuff sometimes, right? But are you at peace when you're mad? You're not, are you? Thank you for helping me. Hey, man, let me tell you something. We all have a tendency to let things bother us sometimes, don't we? And when somebody does something that bothers us, you know what we do? We sit around and we think about it. And what we do is we think about the wrong thing. Most of the time that thinking about it only lasts a couple of minutes. And then we go to a couple of seconds sometimes, even a, even a millisecond sometimes. We jump up and we go to engaging our mouth, saying things that we shouldn't say and doing the things that we shouldn't do and, and acting like we shouldn't act. Y'all ever do that? Don't answer that. See, I'm speaking from experience. You do? I do too. But did you know that what happens is when things like that happens and we go to studying about it and then we get mad and we're mad for months and sometimes days, sometimes weeks, sometimes hours and bottom line is we get mad just ruins our day. Y'all ever got mad and it just ruins your day? Yeah. 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 But look at here. Did you know that the Bible says, and this is God's Word, the Bible says this. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things you know what we can't do we can't sit around and and study and think about the things that aggravate us frustrate us and make us mad do you know what that does that robs us of the peace of God it's stolen from us and we allow it to happen what's, what's, what's your favorite thing what's your favorite toy Batman? What is your, what, you got an electronic toy? You? Yeah. A Nintendo Switch. Well, look, if, if you get my, wait, wait, go ahead. Your favorite toy is what? Okay, you think about it a minute. Let me know in a minute. Let's say you're a Nintendo Switch. How many of y'all got a Switch? Huh? What, have you, what do you guys got? What is y'all's favorite thing back there? A PS4? Have you ever get mad and pitch a little fit? Have you ever got mad and pitched a little fit? Said things you wasn't supposed to say, maybe to your sister or to, even sometimes to your mama? Uh-huh. And then you know what happens when you get mad? Have you ever had your PS4 took away from you? you ever had your Switch took away from you because you got mad? Wow, look at that. You know what, though? If you'd have thought about the things of the Lord instead of the things that aggravated you, you know what? That peace, see, you, you, then, then you just got that much matter when they took it away for a little while. But if we think about the things, listen to this again. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. God will give you peace if you think on his things instead of those things. You see, we control what we think about. We can think about the right thing or we can think about the wrong thing. Make sure we think about the right thing.
So let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for these, my little friends. God, I pray that you just help them. Lord, how I wish I'd learned at an early age to think about the things that was good and not think about the things that were bad. I think about how many of my relationships have been damaged over the years, thinking on the wrong things, pondering about the wrong stuff. Help me to always, God, just to focus on you, focus on your will, your way. And Lord, uh, the good things of life, not the bad. Lord, I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's get us some candy, huh? All right, all right. Why are they getting some candy? You go ahead and tell me. I buy the iPad. iPad? All right. All right, as the children get our candy, if our morning uh, ushers will come down, if you'll stand for our offering, we're going to sing page 110 in the red book. It's Heaven's Jubilee. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Children of church dismissed at this time.
when we see Jesus. On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. I, uh, I think I've told this story before, so if you've heard it, just uh, give me liberty, please. When uh, one, of the, one of the questions that probably is one of the more often questions among Christians is, when we die, what happens? Do we, do we lay in the grave? Do we go to glory? Do we just float around? What do we do? Well, I asked my grandfather that question one time because he was, he was a godly man, deacon in the church, served faithfully, and I thought, you know, that's my go-to guy right there, my granddad. And when I asked him, he looked at me and he said, don't know, I ain't never tried it. And I was kind of taken aback. You know, now my granny was not a humorous man, you know. He was a very quiet man, but I was like, okay. And I had to think about it for about a week. It really kind of put me in a bad place. But then I realized, I said, you know, my granddaddy's faith is just that simple. Doesn't matter to him. He didn't get tangled up in all the, you know, what about this, what about that. Didn't matter. He knew where he was going. And that was good enough. And I'm so thankful that I finally figured that out. It took me a little bit of time. But when we were at our first church, Center West, we had a lady, her name was Nina. Nina's favorite song was God on the Mountain. That's what she always sang, God on the Mountain. Nina was probably early 40s. She had a, she had a problem with her delivery and wound up having a handicapped child. And she, she struggled. She owned a business. Well, a business owned her, for those of you that's owned businesses. Can I get an amen? amen. There you go. Uh, but she had a restaurant. So she cooked. She served. She cleaned all that good stuff. She, the husband was gone, divorced. She took care of that handicapped child. Well, because of what happened with her delivery, she didn't go to the doctor like maybe she should have. And so time they found that she had ovarian cancer, it was way too far gone. So I guess probably two, maybe three months, Nina went through that, and we tried to help her the best way that we could. But when it, just the last couple of days she lived, she was in the hospital. And you could go in and you could go visit Nina. And now, Granny, I'm sure there was pain meds involved, but she was lucid. She could talk to you just like I'm talking to you guys. But then she'd say, oh, wait, listen. Do you hear that heavenly choir? Isn't that just beautiful? Of course, we'd sit around and say, well, no. We don't hear, oh. And then she'd say, just hold on, Jesus. Hold on. I just need a little more time. Now, I'm by my grand. I like my granddaddy when it comes to that. Was she here in the heavenly choir? It's good enough for me either way. Was she speaking to Jesus? I don't know. I feel like she was. Like I said, she was lucid. I mean, she'd say, hang on, hang on. Or Brother Mark. I mean, she was just that lucid. And when we sing songs like Heaven's Jubilee and the choir's about to sing a song that we love, it's called I Will Rise. That's what I think about. I think about knowing that there is a better day. Amen. Amen. If you have been saved by the wonderful, marvelous grace of God, there'll be a better time. That's right. And that's what we need to focus on. I know our daily walk here has trials and has struggles. I realize that. But we need to try to look past that. We need to look forward. You know, what is God doing in your life? How is he using that situation in your life? Will you allow him to use that situation? A lot of times we just want to throw
throw in the towel. We say, we've had it. We've had enough. We're tired of fighting. We're tired of aggravation. We don't need to hassle. We'll just isolate ourselves. Don't do that. The Bible says for us to share our burdens. Yeah. We don't do the best of that either. The bottom line is, I can't help Brother Allen if he just sits over there and says, well, I got this problem. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to share it with anybody. I'm strong. I can it. Reach out. That's how you form relationships. That's how you show love to each other. There's nothing like having a hard, difficult day, and all of a sudden, the phone rings or you get a text, and it just says, hey, thinking about you today, praying for you. Well, praise the Lord. I needed that, right? Amen. Amen. Do that. It's all about Him. It's not about us. But one day, we will rise. And I'm like, you play a far stand in the place.
hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call at the midnight cry we'll be going home when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children The midnight cry, the midnight cry, when Jesus comes again. <coughs> I look around me, I see prophecies fulfilling. And the signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as he says, son, go get your children at the midnight cry. The bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise.
this morning turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 I want to be talking to you just for a few minutes about the church at Corinth and I believe with all of my heart that we can certainly uh, find the church of today uh, walking right alongside uh, many times of where the church at Corinth was at this time um, if we start to read I want to read just a, a few verses uh, and because we're going down through it in, in, a, in a little while. But I'll probably read down through uh, 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 about, uh, I don't know, I'll read till the Lord tells me to stop. Amen? Let's stand on in reverence to the reading of the Word of God. Here's what the Word of the Lord says. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 1. The Bible says, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions, the word contentions there means quarrels, among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. Least any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Uh, besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolishness the wisdom of the world, this world? For after that, in, for the, after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, and the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them that are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, 
are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who are of God, is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. I'm going to ask if you would, Brother Ed, to carry us to the Lord, please. Amen. You may be seated. As we start to look at this passage of Scripture, I think it's important for us to pause and just think about just for a minute, just what is the purpose of the church? A lot of people have a lot of different ideas about the church, but biblically there is a purpose to the church. The very first purpose of the church is for us to join together in worship. God likes for us to collectively worship Him. And as we gather together in the house of God, we gather together for the purpose of his worship. And play, I pray that each week as we worship him, I pray that our worship is pleasing. That I pray, pray that it is a sweet savor unto him. My friends, I'm going to be honest with you. I like to sing along with a good song riding down the road in my truck. But my friends, it's nothing like being able to gather together with like-minded believers and have a, a worship time. I believe with all of my heart that the first purpose of the church is to worship. But the second purpose of the church is to edify, to edify the body of Christ, to equip the body of Christ, to have the body of Christ ready to serve him. The Bible teaches us that we are to be servants of God. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When we look at the word servant and we start to think about what a servant is, it is a person who has surrendered themselves to the desires of another. Friends, if I serve you, my friend, I am surrendering myself to meet your desires. So, my friends, the second thing is that we're coming to the house of God for the purpose of equipping ourselves to please the desires. Of God, I'll be honest with you. I need to be edified. I need to be uh, uh, growing in in, your, in His Word uh, that I might be a better servant of God. And the third purpose of the church, and the, and one of the main things of the church, is to evangelize. I'm not ready to go evangelize. I'm not ready to go out and witness. I'm not ready to go out and share the gospel until I am equipped. I come into the house of God for the purpose of equipping. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, uh, my worship is not going to be right. My, my, my equipping is definitely not going to happen. And, and my evangelism will, and evangelism will not take place collectively if we are fussing and fighting among ourselves. Just like I shared with the kids this morning in our, in our children's sermon, uh, we are to think on certain things. They sometimes we think on things that we shouldn't. We think on things like, well, uh, the, the choir sang too long, or the choir didn't sing the right song. Or we think about the preacher. The, I don't like how the preacher delivers a sermon. Did you see what the preacher wore Sunday morning? Can you believe it, Sister Sally? Uh, 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 she sat on that pew, and she didn't sit on this pew. Can you believe? We study on the wrong. We major on the minors, don't we? My friends, we quarrel among ourselves. Friends, I want you to know the Bible says that it, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Without a shadow of a doubt, God means for us to walk together in unity. The church is supposed to walk together in unity. What does that mean? That means that we're supposed to be like one unit. Each step, my friends, we're supposed to be like we're locked arms together marching forward for the cause of Christ. You and I are supposed to be working together. My friends, I want you to know uh, the church at Corinth was having trouble walking together, because, though they had once done so. 
Let's read the scriptures, if you will. He starts out writing in verse 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother. My friends, I want you to know as he starts to write, Paul is coming to, 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 to address some things. As a matter of fact, he's going to tell them in just a minute that he's got a letter from the household of Chloe, and he's going to tell them that they, he, they have told him about the divisions that's among the church. And, and the church was an offspring of Paul. Paul is the one who had established the uh, Corinthian church. And, and I got news for you. When a, when, a, when a pastor establishes a church, when a pastor is, has led a church, when he's poured his life into a church he loves that church and he loves the people and when he heard that there was problems in the church you know what his instinct was was to come and try to heal the church to bring healing to it to put it back together the way that it should have been so Paul comes and he, he's heard from him and he, he writes to him he says unto listen to what he said unto the church of God which is at Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus what does sanctified mean made clean they'd been born again the, the folks that he's writing to had been saved they, they knew him in the free pardon of sin they, they were trusting in him they were walking with him at, at one time uh, a call to be saints they'd been called out of the world their lives had been transformed they were now no longer saved sinners but they were now referred to as saints by the way a lot of people still uh, uh, have a tendency to say and I've said it many times before hey, that I'm just a sinner saved by grace that's true but I ain't a sinner anymore not according to scripture scripture says one time you're born again you're a saint but my friends sometimes saints have still have the ability to sin amen but look what he says. He says this. He said, hey, he's writing to those that are that are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints with all in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen what he says in verse number 4. It's imperative for us to grab a hold of this. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. I want you to understand that this church hadn't just been established. It wasn't just a, a brand new church. It wasn't a babe in Christ. The church had been established a while, and they knew the ways of God. You know, it's one thing for, uh, uh, for kids when they when they growing up. It's one thing for, for, for little Johnny and little Sally uh, uh, to, 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 to act the way they do because they don't know any better. But bless God, when little Johnny and little Sally gets to be a, a, adults, my friend, there's ways that they shouldn't act anymore, though we sometimes do, do we not? My friend, I want you to know, as, as, as a kid, little, little Johnny, he's always trying to uh, uh, pull something on, on little Sally, but when they get to be this age, they don't need to be doing that anymore. You see, the church there at Corinth was not a baby church. It's one that had already had the Word of God poured into them. Look what it says here in this passage of Scripture. He says that in everything ye are enriched by him. Who's he talking about? By Christ. You, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. What he said, you had a testimony of Christ. You, 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 you gave a testimony of what Christ had done in your life. People knew you were where you are by, by, by your own testimony. My friends, I want you to know something. By the words you say and the actions that you, that you put out there, people know where you are in Christ. You know what? People know the folks that come in and out of the church. Now, if you're acting like a Christian out yonder in the world, they know that. But if you go to church and you act like a heathen out there, they know that you go to that church too. Amen. Listen, let me leave that alone. I'll just leave that alone. Let's go on. So that ye come behind in no gift. I want you to understand this. He said, the church at Corinth, they wasn't lacking anything. They'd done been given the, not only the milk of the word, but they'd been given the meat of the word. He said, they wasn't, you wasn't behind in nothing. Uh, look what it says. Uh, he says, he said, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. They knew Christ was going to return. They were ready. You know what he describes? He describes the churches of today. 
He describes old Central Hatchet, First Baptist Church right there, and, and those that seen him that are mature in Christ. Those that have heard the gospel, those that have been sanctified by the word, those that have grown up in, in the word. He, he's describing us to a T. He, he, he describes us. He, he says, listen to this, Who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, he said you know him. God is faithful by whom he called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. Now, when we move down into verse 10, we see that something has happened. You see that word now? <laughs> he said, you was there. You was there. You had arrived. You were, you were, you were around where you were supposed to be. You were, you were living for God. You had surrendered to God. You had you'd been, you'd grown up in, in the faith. You were, you were mature in the faith. But, but now, something happened. Something happened to you. you know, something, something tripped you up. Something come into your road, and, and, and you're now tripped up, if you will. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Wait a minute. And that there be no, what? Divisions among you. How many churches have been busted up? How many times has the cause of Christ been busted up because there's been divisions among the people. Did you know we're supposed to? You remember a while ago I said that the church is supposed to be walking together in unity? We're supposed to be one voice. We're supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to be the hands of Christ. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to be uh, uh, our worship is all supposed to be uh, together. We're supposed to be worshiping him together. You can't sit back there on the pew and mad as the mad as the old wet hen uh, uh, because somebody else is is up there and, and and they're not singing the song the way that you want it sung. They're not teaching the way that you want them to teach. You can't sit back there and mad as old wet hen and our worship be together. It don't work that way. You see, we're supposed to work, be together, one body, but fitly framed together, is what the scripture says. Friends, let me share this with you. The Corinthian church, they, they listen to this. I want to go on down. I got I to read this before I can go down there. Hold on, Spirit. Now, I, I, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions. It's evident that he had heard there was divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the household of Chloe. Man, I wouldn't have wanted to have been in Chloe's household, would you? Man, them folks that was again it, buddy, they was going to call them folks up after church, buddy. Listen to this. Say that, 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 now this I say, that every one of you that saith, I'm of Paul, I am of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, or Peter, and I'm of Christ. In other words, they, they, they said, I'm following, I'm following this one, or I'm following that one. Well, I'm going with this group, and I'm going with that. Why in the world don't we just go with Christ? Why don't we just follow his way? Let me share this with you. These folks, he asked them this question. He says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none. It's what Paul said, but Crispus and Gaius. Why? Because they'd added his name in there. And they said, well, we're going to follow Paul. Friend, let me share this with you. We got to understand something. We got to understand that the division that comes among us as believers has no place among us as believers. The division. I want you to grab this. If you write stuff down, Brother Mark, don't say much profound, but you ought to get this. The division that comes among us has no place among us. For we ought to be one voice. We all ought to be one mindset. We ought to all be one judgment. Now I want you to understand something. Do you know how to eradicate divisions that are among us? I can tell you that. Make the cross the focus of everything that we do. If we make the cross the focus of everything that we do, there can't be divisions among us. 
Now, if, 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 we, if we make the thermostat and what temperature it is in here, if that's a focus of what we own, there's going to be divisions. You know why? Because my wife, she likes it at 64 degrees. I like it at, six, at 74 degrees. She likes it at 64 degrees. Hey, I don't know. What do you like it at, sister? 74 is good. What do you like it at? Huh? 72. What do you like it at, Robert? 74. How about you? 74. And you know what? You wanted it something else. There's divisions among us over the, over the temperature in the sanctuary. You know what? There's divisions among us over what pew it was, we got. We got pews or chairs. I want, they don't even look like the church anymore. They took the pews out. Well, praise God. Go up there and sit on them in the, in the, in the building. Amen. Let, as long as we've got something else, the focus of what we're doing, there's division among us. But if we will make the cross of Christ the center of our focus there's no divisions among us whatsoever can't be there cannot be a division among us as long as he is the main thing can't happen so let me talk about that just for a minute how do we wind up having those divisions we must understand uh, that 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 we're nothing on our own we're nothing on our own like what he wants us to be you see first of all I can't be spiritual on my own. If I'm focused on anything else other than the cross of Jesus Christ, if I'm focused on anything else other than Him, I can't be spiritual on my own. I try to be spiritual on my own, but I wind up surrendering to my flesh. Why? Because my flesh is many times more appealing than what the Spirit is. Did you get what I said? Sometime, most of the time, the flesh is more appealing than the Spirit. Why? Because it appeals to our flesh. The things of the world appeals to our flesh. But, so, so therefore, I can't be spiritual on my own because I'm satisfied with this today, but I ain't satisfied with it tomorrow. Today, I like to go in this direction. Tomorrow, I'm going to go in that direction. I like to go to Florida in the, in the, in the wintertime, and, and I like to go to the mountains in the summertime. Uh, but, but you know what? In the summertime, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the beach in the summertime because in the summertime, I get all hot and sweaty down there. And in the wintertime, I get too cold in the mountains, so I, I want to go this way this time and that way that time. But you know what? Neither one of them is the direction I ought to be traveling. The direction I ought to be traveling is toward the cross. You see, when we look at this, I want you to understand this. Pride causes divisions because pride causes it to be all about ourselves. The Corinthians church had a problem. I am of a, I, I'm of Apollos. Uh, 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 well, wait a minute. I, I, I'm not of Apollos. I, I, I follow Cephas. Now, Cephas, uh, Peter, you know him. Uh, hey, Peter, you, 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 Cephas is my man. I, I, I'm going to follow him. But what about Christ? Many times when, when, we, when, we, when we do that, what is right in our own eyes, we practice our sin nature. You know, that's what most of us do. That's what the Corinthians church was doing. They was practicing what was right in their own eyes. They was deciding, well, I need to follow this way or I need to follow that way. Well, he tells us what to follow in his word. If we follow the cross, my friend, he tells us how to go. He tells us what our direction ought to be. He tells us how we're supposed to act and react if we're following him. The church at Corinth had problems. Because they were serving their sin nature. The divisions that was among them was because of their sin nature. Friends, let me share this in a moment. I'm going I'm I'm to hurry up. When we go back and we look, man, I jumped a bunch of pages there. Listen to this. He said, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? 
I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any of you should say that I had baptized in my own name. I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Uh, uh, besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. Paul just said, man, I'm glad I ain't have nothing to do with all that. I'm glad my name ain't put in that. Why was he that way? Because Christ sent him not to baptize, not to bring glory to himself, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made non effect. When we get to focusing on everything else other than Christ, you know what we do? We make the cross non effect. What do you mean by that, Brother Mark? We cease to see God working in our midst when we get our focus on anything else other than the cross. I didn't get saved because the temperature was 74. I didn't get saved because it was 64. I didn't get saved because I was sitting on a pew and not on a chair. I didn't get saved because we had red carpet instead of gray carpet. We, I didn't get saved because I liked hearing what the preacher had to say, uh, that, that particular preacher. I got saved because I heard the message of the gospel and I was convicted over myself because I was a sinner lost and undone. I got saved because I heard the good news that that whosoever believeth in him, if we would confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I didn't get saved because Darnell Till delivered the message. I got saved because of the message. Amen? Let me tell you something, church. The church is crippled today because we got divisions among ourselves and we're not doing everything we can to, to raise the expectations of Christ working in our midst and, and, and allowing Christ to transform us by focusing on the Christ. Now, if we get our vision on the cross, you see every one of these empty seats in here this morning? They'll be full. If we get our focus on the cross, you know what we'll do? We'll start to be faithful to do what the Scripture says do. You see, we'll start to find ourselves becoming equipped for the work of the church, which is to carry the gospel to a lost and dying world. I'm gonna, can I can I can I make, do a, I'm not I'm not a Catholic, but I want to make a confession to you. Can I make a confession to you? I do a lot of mission trips, and you know it. And I love to work with the campers on mission. I do love to work with the campers on mission. Matter of fact, we're going in January. We're going to work with the campers on mission. I'm excited about it. We're going to be building a church. Man, I love it. It's a great mission project and everything else. But you know, going down there, working hard, and they, some of them days, I'm dog tired, but I'm not as tired as I am when I work with Central Hatchie, but, 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 but I, I, I'm dog tired at the end of the day because I physically work. But do you know how I, I, that mission trip is easy? Do you know the mission trip is hard? The mission trip is hard is when God has sent me and I have got, walked up and I'm standing outside of your door. I don't know you from Adam's house yet. And God has sent me there to knock on that door. And when you answer and open that door, he's done told me to share the gospel with you. That's hard. It ain't comfortable. It's not. But he didn't ask me to be comfortable. He asked me to be faithful. To be faithful. And you know what? I can work all day long. I love it, Brother Chuck. I can work all day long. We can put them floor joists. That's what we're doing. We're tearing the floor out of a church and putting a whole new floor in. We can work all day and putting them floor joists in. And there'll people walk on them. Lord willing, God, I hope so, pray so, that one day they'll walk forward and they'll give their heart to Jesus and we'll have a part in that when we get to glory. He said, you help build my house. I say, hallelujah. But you know what? What he really wants out of me is to knock on that door and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I won't do it as long as we're fussing and arguing, and you won't do it either. If we're focused more on what else, everything else that's going on at the church than we are about the gospel, then we're not going to be faithful. There's some of us in here that is equipped. We have got tools in our toolbox. We have got our tool belts on. We could go anywhere and do the work of the church. But it's been so long since we pulled, uh, we have pulled out uh, the, the truth of the word and shared it with anybody. It'd probably hang up after we pull it out of our tool belt. 
It's been so long since we have made the cross the focus of our attention that if Chloe went to church here, she'd probably write a letter to Paul and say there are divisions among them. See, when we find this down through here, he says that he would make the cross of Christ non-effective. I don't know about you, but I don't want our church to be ineffective, do you? I want our church to count, don't you? Hey, two or three of us do anyway, amen? I want our church to count. I don't, want, I don't want the power of God to come off of us. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8 says that you shall receive power. I don't want to lose that power of the gospel. I don't want to lose the power of God working in our midst. And the only way I can do that, and the only way you can do that, is if we make that cross, the gospel, the center of everything in our life. The only way that we can have the power of God on our lives individually, now let's move away from the church just for a minute. The only way that the power of God's going to be actively working in my life and in your life is if we make that cross the center of who we are. Unless we make his... We were bought with a price. Did you know that? Bought. I was down at your place the other day and you were riding on pretty nice side by side. Max, I was down at Dillon's and I seen you. Did you buy that? Does that belong to you? I'm just going to come get it carried up my house because you're going to let me do that. Can I keep it? I want to keep it, though. Huh? I'm going I'm to write marks. I'm going to put a tag on the front that says marks. Can I do that? Bye-bye. <laughs> he bought it. It's his. You were dead in your trespasses and sin. And he bought you with the precious blood of Christ. You don't have the right to put your hand back on your own life and decide what you do with your life now. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you seem powerless in your spiritual life? Maybe it's because you're focusing on everything but what you're supposed to focus on. Maybe you got too caught up. Scripture teaches us that we're not to entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life. Not to entangle ourselves. It says, lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us or knock us down and let us run with patience or endurance the race that is set before us. So maybe you're here today, and you know what? If you just be honest with yourself and honest with the Lord, the Lord already knows. Maybe you could just simply say, I hadn't made Christ the focus of my life. I'm still serving myself. And maybe you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, today is the day that you need to turn your eyes back toward Him. That you need to make it, because you want, you want your life. You want the power of God working in your life and in the life of your family. So maybe you need to just turn your heart toward him and say, God, forgive me. And ask him to reestablish a right heart and a right vision within you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You're here today and you've never, ever, ever trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Then you haven't ever made Christ the focus of your life. 
but you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you need to. You know that he went to the cross. You know he died for you. You know that the wages of your sin was death, spiritual death, to spend eternity in a place called hell. But you know that you've never, ever, ever asked Christ to forgive you. And you want to make sure today that you don't leave this place before you do. So maybe right where you're at, right where you're at, you might just simply say, Lord, I believe that you died for me. Maybe you'd pray and say, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. I trust in what you did when you died on the cross. And by faith, I'm asking you today, as best as I know how, to save my soul. I'm trusting in you. Maybe you're here today and you've lost your focus. You've lost the spirit and the power of God in your life and you need it back. You want it back. Your desire is to have it back. Maybe you simply pray something like this. Father God, I have intentionally or unintentionally allowed other things to take over. I've let other things become the main thing in my life. Would you forgive me? Today I surrender again to thee. Today I give you my life again. Today I rededicate myself to your will and your purpose. Because without you, I am nothing. Lord, I ask you right now to restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I surrender. I surrender all. Do a work now, Lord. In both groups of people that's under the sound of my voice today. For that one, it prayed and asked you to come into their heart for the first time. I pray, God, that you would give them a holy boldness to step out and come and let me take your word and show them how to be saved. But I pray for that one, Sarah, that prayed to be restored. That they would make their way to appear to an old-fashioned altar. Sit on the front, sit on the platform, whatever. I pray, God, that they would just move for you. That there be no longer divisions in our heart. But we'll be singleness of mind, singleness of thought. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand your feet all over the house. As the music plays, if you prayed either prayer with me, I'm going to ask you to come. If you prayed for salvation, I'm going to ask you to come and let me take God's word and show you how to be saved. But if you prayed for the restored power and you surrendered to him in prayer, I'm going to ask you to come also. Come and kneel in this altar and do business with the Lord whatever you need to do. Is these are coming, will you come? Is these are coming, will you come? It's not just about the manger. Would you come? Where the baby Don't is. hesitate, don't wait. Would you come? It's not all about the who sing for him that day. You've allowed everything else it's to take your focus. But you want to give it back wholly to him today. Would you come? Lost friend, take me by the hand. Let me show you how to be saved. Would you come? It's about the cross. It's about my sin. 
It's about how Jesus came to be. How about you this morning? Don't wait. Don't hesitate. If the Holy Spirit's dealing with your heart, don't let Satan win the battle anymore. Come on. Come on. So that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. He loves you so much. He cares about you. It's not Would you come to Him? The good thing Would you trust Him? In this life I've done, it's not all about the treasures or the trophies that I've won. It's not about the righteousness that I find within. It's all about His precious blood that saved me Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to this world and dying the atoning death for our sin. May we continue to keep you at the center of all that we do. May our focus be around uh, uplifting you in every way. God, I pray that you would just let our lives bring honor and glory to you. Let this old church, God, always be a, be a, a lighthouse, God, on the side of the road, God, where people who are walking in darkness can come find hope. God, I pray that you would just be with us throughout the remainder of the day. Watch over each one of us as we go. For those today who made decisions, God, I pray that your spirit would just be real to them. And for those today who are struggling, God, that was, was wanting to make a decision, was worrying about a decision, but yet failed to do so, I pray, God, for you to be long-suffering, that you'd give them another chance. That before it's eternally too late, God, they'd make a decision Lord, I love you. Thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Brother Robert's got some announcements for us, and then we will be out of here. I love you, church. God bless you. Brother Robert. Thank you for being here with us at Central Hatch First Baptist today. The Carrollton Baptist Association annual meeting will be next Sunday, October the 15th. The Baptist Association will host a one-day senior adult revival on October the 18th at Shady Grove Baptist Church with hymnal singing led by Bryant Turner and guest speaker Dr. Gerald Harris. Everything gets started at 10 a.m. 
It'll wrap up at noon. The Baptist Association will be providing a free country lunch for the senior adults. Please contact Brother Mark or sign up in, on the bulletin board or leave a message on the church phone to make a reservation no later than the 14th so they can prepare lunch for you. We will be... Be leaving here at 9.15. Sign up sheets at the back, one on the Welcome Center and one on the bulletin board. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we will be providing the meal for them, uh, so if you're interested or can help uh, with, any, with anything on that meal, please see me uh, as soon as possible. Join us for Old Fashioned Day on Sunday, October the 22nd, 11 a.m. at Central Hatchie City Park. Followed by a dinner on the ground, bring your covered dishes, enough to feed your family. In the event of rain, we'll meet in the church fellowship hall. This is also Pastor Appreciation Day. A box of thank you notes will be, will be placed at the Welcome Center, located at the ramp entrance. Take time to write Brother Mark a note of thanks for his devoted services to Central Hatchet First Baptist. Also, if you choose to make a monetary gift, place it please place it with your card. And you can feel free to thank Miss Renee for all of her doings that she does. <clears throat> On October the 28th, will be a work day at the Parsonage to replace the roof. Uh, the back, rem Remember the backpacks for Appalachian. If you have any questions on those, see Miss Connie. And in 1901, Domino Sugar was trademark registered. Today is National Touch Tag Day, National Hero Day, and National Fluffernutter Day. So <laughs> go get you some Fluffernuddle and touch tag with your hero. My hero is God. Is there anything else come for for seat to close? No wild Wednesday night. No, no men's group, no ladies' group, no wow, no choir. <clears throat> Y'all have a week off. You're dismissed. Please be back with us again next Sunday. Thank you. <laughs>